In a previous lesson, we looked at a string as a collection of characters and we thought of the string as a set of buckets on a pole. Each bucket has a number painted on the front that is its position on the pole, with the first position starting at zero. Inside each bucket is a single character and the pole is the name of the string. This is exactly what an array is. A string is a one-dimensional array of character variables. By one-dimensional, we mean a single row going in one direction horizontally. However, the main purpose of an array is that, although each bucket needs to be the same type, you can have arrays of different data types. For example, it could be an array of strings which stores a list of words, or an array of integers storing a list of numbers. However, you cannot mix data types inside a single array. You cannot have one bucket storing a number, another bucket storing a string, and so on. Looking at this array, there are some key terms you should know. The name on the pole is our identifier. Each bucket in our array is called an element. Each bucket has a number on it starting from zero, so we can tell each bucket apart. This number is the index of the array. Arrays are usually fixed in size. When you create an array, you have to say how many data items, or buckets, it is going to contain. They are said to be immutable. The array is stored in contiguous memory. This means that the elements are stored next to each other in memory. One-dimensional arrays are created in a manner very similar to creating variables. We need to give our array a name. We need to give our array a data type, though OCR ERL and Python do this automatically. We then also need to say how many elements we are going to need. This is basically saying how many buckets are we putting on the pole. In the following examples, we are going to create an array called MyNumbers to store the integers 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. For example, if we wanted to declare an array using the programming language C Sharp, then we would write the following. This line identifies that we're creating an array of integers. It then gives the array an identifier of my numbers and tells the computer we want five elements in our array. This is like getting a pole, writing a name on it, and then hanging five buckets on the pole. In this case, we say that the array has been declared and initialized. In other words, the array has been created, but no values have been assigned. In AQA pseudocode and Python, we declare arrays differently though. We instead put the values we want to go into the array at the same time that we are declaring it. In the following pseudocode example, we are going to create an array called MyNumbers to store the integers 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. This has automatically created an array with five elements, added five buckets to our pole, and then filled them with the data values. Python does not technically support arrays, but instead has the data structure list. These are similar, but lists are mutable, which means they can be changed in size and can mix data types. Lists are outside the scope of your GCSE though, so we will be using a list like an array. To create our array in Python, we could use this code. To get data out of an array, we would use the index of each element. Let's look at the array we have just created called MyNumbers. So looking at this, element one contains the number 25. If we wanted to print this out, we could say this. We could also get the contents of the array, store it in a variable, and print the variable out. In Python, this might look like this. Of course, you may want to output the entire contents of an array. The simplest way of doing this is through the use of a for loop. The key part to this Python code is this line. This will loop through each element of the array with num storing the value of the current element selected. We then print out the value stored in num on line 3. It's worth noting that Python works quite a bit differently to most programming languages. Let's look at how to do the same code in AQA pseudocode 
which is more similar to how this would be done in most programming languages. The key part to the OCR ERL code is this line. This will create a variable called counter, which will initially be set to zero. It will then loop through until len my numbers minus one. The len function can be used to get the length of an array. But why do we subtract one from it? Well, the length of our array is five because it is storing five integers. However, as we have learned, the index starts at zero, so our fifth index will be four. So essentially, the code is saying loop from index zero to index four of our array. It's worth noting that while Python does this differently, you can still use the len function in Python to get the length of a list. So, Arrays are data structures used for storing collections of data. Arrays once declared are of a fixed size. Arrays can only hold items of the same data type. Each array variable is called an element. You access elements by their index. The array is stored in contiguous memory, i.e. registers next to each other in RAM. You can loop through and print out the contents of an array with a for loop. 